We're live, guys. Welcome, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thank uh, you so much for joining us today. We're back with Alex Sanfilippo again. Alex, so nice to see you again. Yeah, so glad to be here. Thanks so much for having me back and excited to be with everybody today. Off of vacation? Yeah. You're always vacationing, Alex. <laughs> you know, I, I think I, I just take from your guys' book and I, I schedule out some of my content so I don't just share it all at once. It looks like I'm on vacation, but I'm really working quite a bit. But uh, yeah, I, I got a vacation coming up. I don't think I was just on one, though. I, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, not in January. No, not in January. On this end, it just it. feels like you're vacationing a whole lot. Hey, that's you a, you're doing it right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're doing it right. So That's so me. true. Hey, I'm trying to get our brand face background up here real quick before we start. And I don't know where it went. There we go. I think I got it. That's it, guys. There it is. All right. Beautiful. Got well, it. Nice <laughs> Good job. We've gone from darkness to light. <laughs> I love it. Hey, guys, thanks so much for joining us here today. We're, the reason we're doing this webinar is all about podcasting, right? And how to stand out in this huge sea that gets bigger and bigger every day. So I'm going to start off with some stats that might be really interesting to you and then we'll get into the um into the meat of things you know as of october to 20, uh, 2021 there are over two million podcasts uh and we didn't pull that through january uh, to find out how many over two million that it is now there's over 48 million episodes right but here's some other stats you might not know 50 percent of all u.s homes are podcast fans 55% of the U.S. population has listened to a podcast on a regular basis, and 24% um, of those people listen to weekly podcasts, like like listen, 68 million people, right? Or yep. episodes, I guess it would be. Exactly. Yeah. And there are your stats. So, so the challenge for us is this, guys. If there are over 2 million podcasts and 2 million different hosts, how many guests are there, mm. right? There's a lot more than that. And, you know, podcasting gives us an opportunity to set ourselves apart as an expert or authority. In fact, I believe to, in today's age, it is the number one way to set yourself apart. Because think about this. If a podcast host is has a specific topic and they're speaking to a very specific audience, then you want to be that expert. And that positions you so well. It positions you with great authority. It positions you as that expert. And to me, there's no better way to do that. And with the growth trajectory in podcasting, oh, wow. It's, it's available for us right now. It's huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you got to ask yourself, you know, how, how are hosts you know, how are they getting the right guests and how will you stand out as an expert guest? Personal branding is all about presenting yourself as the expert they're seeking. So, you know, we combine together today to bring you the one, two punch. We're going to teach you how to present position and present yourself as an expert podcast guest. And Alex is going to teach you how to use the platform that he founded called pod match to match up with perfect hosts and a perfect audience to get your message out there in the right way. Okay. So um, before we get started, I want to encourage you guys to hit that subscribe button on YouTube. If you're on our YouTube channel right now, hit subscribe. And, uh, the, and we're going to actually enter you automatically if you subscribe today into a um, contest. And we're giving away three of our brand builder courses. And this is a step-by-step -step course that takes you through every part of building your personal brand to position and present yourself as that authority we're talking about today. So in other words, it's the next step, guys. So go ahead, subscribe on YouTube, and we're going to come back at the end of this and reward three of you with a new course uh, for personal branding. All right. So Alex, if you don't mind, why don't you um, just kind of introduce yourself to everybody? Let's tell everybody, you know, a little bit of our story today and why we're here. So I'm going to give you the Give you the stage. Sure thing. Thanks again for having me, and I appreciate everybody who is attending live or even watching the replay. Uh, I love this type of content, so really excited to be here. So my my company Podmatch was something that I decided to do because I just saw the need in the podcasting industry. So me myself, I'm a podcast host, and when I first got into it, I had trouble like everyone else finding any guests. My first 13 guests were friends 
or successful family members or the same successful friend, right? Who had, had came back, I think he came back three times in the first few episodes, but I'm like, this is all I've got. And I never forgot that, but as my show grew in success, I was actually able to start getting on a lot of podcast conference stages. So I started speaking at all the conferences. And at one point I just finally decided, you know, I'm gonna start asking all these people attending, as many as will speak to me, what they're struggling with. And I consistently heard, I'm having trouble finding the ideal guest. And that was like, man, okay, well, let me talk to guests. Are they having trouble finding podcasts, like the right ones? And sure enough, they validated the same thing. So in my head, I was like, okay, what's an industry that's doing this well? And when I thought about it, uh, I've been out of the, the dating game for like almost 10 years. Uh, I've been married for a while. So I've never used a dating app, but all of my friends love them. And they say they're really good. They work well. So I was like, all right, called a buddy. I'm like, hey, man, I need to watch you go through your normal thing you do with your dating app. So I just watched it. I'm like, that's what I'm going to build for podcast guests and hosts. Not not for dates, obviously, but for interviews, right? That's the idea. So that's exactly what we built with Podmatch. It's just a way for podcast guests and hosts to have their interest and what they want to talk about and what their focus is, who their audience is, and somehow build an algorithm around that that will automatically match those people together so they can actually have interviews. And that was the whole idea behind what we did. And we still just to this day have been building upon that. And we'll get into a lot of that today. But for me personally, I, I believe in podcasting. As Tanya and Michael said, like I, it is the best way to get content out there in the world right now. And I believe it's truly serving the world because it is kind of like the last line of defense for independent voices. Sure, social media is great, but you got to pay to play a little bit, right? With podcasting, your voice is getting heard and elevated. And that is my ultimate purpose is just to help people that are on podcasts as a guest or a host, get their voice out there, get out there and serve the world around them. So again, excited to be here. Hopefully we'll be able to add a lot of value. But Tanya, Michael, that's, that's me and a, a little bit for everyone to, hopefully that was helpful for everyone to understand who I am. You got it, awesome. Alex. Thank you so much. And I want to say we've used Podmatch and that's exactly why we're on here with Alex today because we loved the concept love so much. We love it. Then we got in there, we started digging around. I can't like Leslie counted last of how many interviews that we have done since we became part of Podmatch. And it's in, it's probably in the 30s now that we've done those interviews of people we found that we matched up to just like that dating game. We matched up to the right host that we're looking for guests like us. And it was just like magic. And it didn't exist before this, guys. It did not exist before this. Certainly not in this way. So, all right. Well, I'll tell you guys a little bit about myself. Uh, my glamorous beginnings were uh, selling vacuum cleaners door to door. And I, that's where I got my first taste of personal branding. I learned that I had to have a story to get in somebody's home. And uh, three years of doing that. Then I was discovered by somebody in radio and they invited me to apply for a sales job in the media world, which I did. 18 years later, I was still in the media world, helping a lot of people perfect their personal brand and become the best face of their business. When I first got into radio, I noticed right away that there were some rock stars in my market and they were people who were the face of their business or face or voice of their business in that market. And they really were just um, the very popular in the market. People would scramble to have a conversation with them at networking events and so forth. And I thought, this is very interesting. So from that moment forward, personal branding was a very common thread through everything I did. And then in 2013, I thought, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to, unleash this book called Brand Face. Halfway through the book, I realized, holy cow, this is a business, right? This is a way for me to practice what I'm passionate about and help people to become that best face of their business. And that is around the same time frame that I met this gentleman here and I'll let him pick up there and then we'll get on with the program. Yeah. My, uh, my story is a little different. I've been a serial entrepreneur all my life. Uh, came out of high school knowing what I wanted to do, uh, and that was to be an auctioneer, a contract auctioneer in the southeast region of the United States. One of my mentors told me to get my real estate license to maybe make a little extra money. Uh, opened up my own firm in 2000. Still didn't do anything but buy my own rental portfolio and help my friends and family do things. And then in uh, 2006, I got caught up in the mortgage debacle, and I, I collaborated with a bigger company out of Irvine, California. And we went after the Bear Stearns residential portfolio when they went under and got that contract and spent about the next seven years traveling the United States, uh, auctioning off property. I've sold more residential real estate than any one broker on earth. I was licensed in 30 states. I had an office in Atlanta, an office in Irvine, uh, California an office in Seattle, Washington, traveled uh, all over the United States helping with the banks uh, uh, manage this debacle. <clears throat> 
but all auctioneers are always working themselves out of a job, right? So we did that. We came back home hoping that things would come back to normal. Being a serial entrepreneur, I'm like, what am I going to do now? I was convinced to open up a brokerage. So being a part of companies that knew how to market and advertise themselves, I fancied myself as a marketer. Uh, and so when I opened up the company and started putting my name out there a little bit, I, uh, I didn't see the return on investment in my marketing that I should have. About that time, I was introduced to Tanya and Tanya brought the brand face principles to me. They were so successful in my business that, and they still continue to be, that we've doubled and tripled our income year over year over year. Now we started off with a small firm in Je Jefferson, Georgia, north of Atlanta. We have an office in Knoxville. Tennessee. We have an office in Atlanta. We have an office in McDonough, Georgia. We have an office in Orlando, Florida. So we have grown using these very principles. I love the concept so much. I bought into the company, which is what puts me in front of you now. And, um, and what we've realized over time is it doesn't matter where you are as an entrepreneur. If you are an author, a speaker, a podcaster, which is the reason we're talking to you guys today, or any business where you are the face of your business, you need to know the principles we're going to talk to you about here today to be sure that you don't sink into that sea of sameness of those 2 million podcasters and growing uh, every day, uh, because as uh, Alex pointed out, you know, we're still in a very small growth in a very, very infantile stage of this. It's the last defense of the personal voice, like he said, and I agree with him 100 percent. And if you want your voice to be out there, then we've got the program for you here today. Yep. Yep. And uh, and, you know, we we talk about uh, podcast hosts and podcast guests you both need to have a strong, strong personal brand. And that's what we're going to walk you through right now. So Alex, we're coming back to you very shortly to talk about Podmatch. But in the meantime, we're going to jump right in here and talk a little bit about the formula that we created in Brandface called our 3D formula. Okay. And the 3D formula is, we call it our freedom formula, guys. And the reason we do that is because it gives you the freedom to build your business your way, to attract the people you want to attract and live the life that you want to live. And it's, you know, you ask yourself, well, how can just, you know, three steps create all of that? Well, it's very easy. It actually works because you're, instead of waiting for people to tell you what your brand is, you're creating this. You teach people how to treat you in life. You show them how you want them to perceive you, right? And if you act accordingly, build the brand according to who you truly are and what you're trying to accomplish and who you're helping, that's what life's all about. Okay. And so, that is the attractor factor, right? And when you're sure talking is. about podcasts, you've got to have that, you know, when people are scrolling through and they're trying to figure out what they're going to listen to, you want your voice to be the one that pops up into their mind. And they, you've got about two, three seconds really to grab people's attention on that. That's true. That's true. So the 3D formula is made up of three D's define, develop and display. So as you're uh, on your journey to becoming this expert podcast guest, your job is to become as attractive as possible to the podcast host, right? So you've got to dial it in, guys. And it all begins with defining yourself, right? So really, you're looking to define a couple of different things. First of all, your ideal customers. You, you must be very specific about who it is you're trying to attract. Think about this for a minute. You're going to market yourself, right? What do you put in that marketing? Where do you market yourself? Well, first of all, you got to know who is it I'm trying to attract and what is it they need to hear from me in order to be attracted to me, right? Mm -hmm. Then you need to look at point of differentiation. So as human beings, we all have multiple points of differentiation. So we've got to figure out which of those points of differentiation appeal to and attract my ideal customer. Okay, so that's what you can offer that no one else can offer. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of present this in a 75 mile an hour view of who you are, or what you stand for. Now, here's an awesome little nugget. Everybody needs what I call a brand identifier, brand identifier. It's a slogan or a tagline, basically, that says who you are or what you stand for. I'll give you a great example. What's your brand identifier, Michael? The Abundant Life Broker. The Abundant Life Broker. Why is that? Because I help real estate agents and entrepreneurs achieve the abundance of life that they desire. 
Okay, so you see at a glance, Abundant Life Broker gets your attention. Does it tell you Michael's whole story? Of course not. But why do we need it? Think about your brand like a book, okay? Because your brand is your story. Mm -hmm. Alex has a story. We have stories that you just heard a little slice of. But you cannot fit the entire contents of your story on the cover of your book, right? Nobody would read it. Nobody could read it. So, <laughs> so you've got to create that, that 75 mile an hour, awesome book cover that people are seeing in this like, wow, that looks interesting. Let me pick it up and flip through that book. Let me open the first page of your story. So that's why we look at a brand identifier, otherwise known as a slogan or a tagline to kind of begin the journey, kick open the door to what you want people to know about you. What are you known for? What do you stand for? And so that's what we do in the define phase. Ideal customer, create that snapshot, exactly who you're talking to, who you're trying to attract, what you have to offer that no one else can. In other words, your points of differentiation pared down to the ones that are really most important and significant to your ideal customers. And then start with this slogan or tagline. We call it a brand identifier that creates that 75 mile an hour view, your book cover, if you will, of who you are or what you stand for. And that my friends is the define phase of our 3D formula. Super important, obviously, because like she said, that's the cover of the book. Mm -hmm. And if you go into a bookstore and you've got all of these books to look at, even in different sections, you can boil that down to a certain section. Podcasting, author, speakers, you're all in the same boat when it comes to this. And but then even in that section, you're competing. Right. And all you're looking at is the spine of the book and you're trying to figure out which one of it is that attracts you the most. And so that defined uh, is very important. Also, when you're talking about your ideal customer, what is it? What is it that your voice is trying to say and who are they trying to say it to? Because if you have that dialed in, now you know how to reach out to that person looking for that knowledge that you're sharing with them. Second phase of that D is develop. And this is where you actually get into the meat of things. All right. So now you grab somebody's attention. Why should I listen to this podcast? Why should I be a part of it? Like, what, what, what is this person uh, that it seems attractive to me? And I've stopped and I've paid attention for just a second. What's next? And you want to get them to open that book, right? That you want them to get to click play and say, well, what is this about? Right. Well, now if you have developed the rest of your story, they get to learn why it is that you're even equipped to, to, to have a voice, Right. So when you're having your podcast and when you're when you're speaking or when you're an author or writing things or even when you're an entrepreneur of any kind, uh, the why is very important. But the why is very important to your listeners, to your customers. So the develop phase is when, you know, people look you up online and then this goes into maybe your website. It goes into the description uh, that Alex is going to talk about later on on your podcast uh, pod match profile. This is when it starts telling them what gives you the expertise that they need. All right. This is a development, but it doesn't just stop with a great bio. It doesn't just stop with, Hey, I got into this because I spent 20 years in an industry and I noticed that nobody was teaching the young people how to get into that industry. And I thought, well, I've been doing it for 20 years and I can start a podcast to help them, you know, or, you know, I've been through tough situations. So I'm going to start a podcast or I'm going to write a book or I'm going to do a speaking series about what I went through so I can help other people that are going through the same thing. This is where you start to explain to them your why, right? Mm -hmm. And then the background images, it, it, it boils down to any of the display images that you need. The right colors, so important. Your logo actually needs to be important, right? We we talk to people all the time and they say, well, I've got a tagline and I've got my picture and I've got a, a, a logo. So what else do I need to have my brand? Those are just three elements of a brand. They are not in and of themselves a brand. When you uh, combine your bio, your uh, your spotlight sheet, your elevator pitch, um, when you put your brand message, your brand imagery, right? We noted um, a picture is worth a thousand words. It has to be the right picture and the right thousand words, right? Because if they're in juxtaposition of each other, then the, the human mind subconsciously just passes on it, just like that. So you've got to be sure that you've tied these things in together and they require a certain amount of thought. 
So during the development phase, like we take our clients and we spend a lot of time with them to figure out personally, who is it that's the driving factor behind this podcast? What has motivated them to do that? And then we have built attractive language and background images and colors and logos to infuse to a person beyond that 75 mile an hour view. What is the deeper message behind this? And then creating that interest that makes them continue to want to listen through an episode. And then you build it from there. All right. So that's the develop. Now, the third and final phase of the 3D Freedom Formula is display. Sort of makes sense, right? You define what you're all about, who the ideal customers are. You develop every piece and part you need to articulate that, how, you set, how you're set apart, what that brand looks like, sounds like, feels like. Now we're going to display it. Where do we display that brand? Literally everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. everywhere. Okay. So what we want to do is make sure that brand is compelling, which is, would have been created by sheer definition and development. Right. And make sure it's consistent. And this is where the consistency comes in. Okay. Doesn't it feel great to know that you have all of your branding elements in one place ready to go? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, when I started working with Tanya in, in a different industry, right? We had a construction company, a real estate company. I had six trucks on the road. Two of those trucks had a different logo and two of them had different phone numbers on. <laughs> That's not consistent. Right. And no, so not. when you're building a podcast audience and you've got to show up everywhere and you need all of your um, all of your social media pushes. Right. All of your advertising to, to drive people back to you. You don't want different imaging. You don't want different. You want to build that brand and that brand consistently um, because that's what's going to get people talking and, in, and start engagement. And engagement is so vitally important on all of your mediums. Mm -hmm. And that consistency is so important, guys, because people expect that. Like they want to know, oh, I see a purple wall. That's Alex, right? I mean, look, check look him out. out. Okay. Alex is consistent. Uh, he's consistent. He's always got his pod match shirt on. Like he's so consistent. I generally will have some orange on. We always have brand face in the background. There's consistency there when people are scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, there they are. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what you want, guys. That's what you want. So what I learned, you know, um, in in helping people build their brands for so many years is you want to have everything at your fingertips because you never know when you're going to get a call. Hey, can you be a guest on this podcast? Hey, can we feature you, your story in a magazine? And then you start to panic and think, okay, where's my logo? Where's my bio? Where's my photos? And you realize they're on two or three different computers or lost altogether, right? Well, you want to have it all in one place. And what's really cool about this is uh, you can go into Podmatch when you set it up, and Alex is going to talk about this more. I'm not stealing his thunder, but uh, but when you have a pod, when you have a, a guest kit, if you will, a podcast guest kit, we call it a press kit. Um, then you're going to have all these things in one place once your brand is dialed in. And it's going to be so easy to go in and set up your profile. And then also, once you become invited on a show to send everybody, hey, here's one link. And inside of that Google Drive link, here are all these folders of things you're going to need to present us as a guest, right? So, so take a look at what's in our folder. This is just a snapshot of the folders in our press kit or podcast kit as a guest. We've got our social media links, photos of both of us, different photos so they can promote it in different ways, offers for their audience, a gift for their audience, contact info, bios, and the brand face logos, guys. So that's a Literally lot. Literally like everything, everything they need. That, that host needs. Every, and I cannot tell you the number of times we get complimented on that to say, wow, you guys have your stuff together. Like I didn't have to ask for anything. It was all right there. And that's what's really important, guys. So, so I'm going to, um, you know, kind of back up just for a second and say, remind you of define, develop, display. And once those three things are completed, then you will have everything you need to move forward and present yourself as an expert guest. OK, so and then I'll Alex, I'll come back and I'll show this slide right here in just a little bit, because this is this is taking a look at what a guest needs 
to set up a guest profile. So let's go ahead and move forward to you, Alex, and let you share what we mean by this, guys. So for instance, you guys have learned to find, develop, and display. You have to position yourself to present yourself as the expert, as the ultimate irresistible guest. So once you complete those things, now Alex is going to show you, okay, I'm ready now. I've, I like, I'm all dressed up and know where to go. <laughs> Alex is going to show you where to go. Yeah. Right? Thanks for, I mean, man, I, I want to like comment on a hundred, like I was taking notes. I want to comment like on a hundred things you guys said, but I'm just going to going to not do that. Um, I, I will speak to, <laughs> I'll speak to one thing just really briefly here. I know we were pressed on time as always, but, uh, Michael, uh, first off, you never needed help with your hair. I'm always like so jealous of your hair. Like all your pictures, I'm like, dude, Tony, you have nice hair too. I don't want that hair though. But, <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank yeah, you. <laughs> but the, the whole thing, like we had two trucks with different brands, uh, like different logos and stuff. I, I've worked with people that I wanted to have on my show, but when I started trying to research them, I'm going to their social media pages, their website, and none of it lines up. I'm like, is this the same company? Like, I, I can't tell if, if someone can't tell, right. like, even if you just ask a friend, you say, Hey, do you think these are the same companies? You put them side by side and they say, oh, I'm not sure there's a problem. Um, it's gotta all be super consistent. And so for me, I've had some people that I thought would be a guest on my show that ended up not being it because I couldn't find out enough information about them. Uh, so, I mean, I appreciate you all sharing everything that you shared. And I, I want to recommend everybody get involved in what brand face is doing because it is going to, I mean, it, it'll elevate everything that I talk about. Like it's going to take you so much further if you're aligned with somebody like them uh, instead of maybe just feeling like you're hitting your head against the wall, right? Like, um, cause that's sometimes what happens even if you set this stuff up. But anyway, I, I wanted to, if you're okay with that, I wanted to actually show your pod match profile. I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Absolutely. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit share real quick, uh, share screen. And I talk while I do things in case you all wanted to know. Okay. So here we go. Uh, can someone confirm that you all can see this? Can you all see the uh, the pod match profile here? I have to check a comment, I guess, huh? Let me see. Whoa, that's scary. Could, I just need to make sure everyone can see this before I get started here. Tanya, Michael, can you all see that? Okay, I'm gonna assume that everybody can. I can't hear from anybody, but I'm gonna assume that you all can see what I'm looking at here. So this is their profile. Now, most people, obviously, they're a package deal which I think is really cool. Most of us, we're going to be on our own. Like we're completely individual, right? But as you can see here, they've got their very consistently branded image, the featured image here. I don't know if you all have noticed, but these two colors, this, I'm not color, I'm not going to say I'm colorblind, but like a yellowish color and like a purplish color. And if I'm off on those colors, forgive me. But um, anyway, that's what I'm seeing here. Uh, it's very consistent, everything that you've seen with their slides and stuff like that. They've got their name. They, they have like what they do, right? Like a little tagline there. And then I'll just kind of slide down this, this whole part here. Um, the next thing they have is some, some tags. It makes it very easy for somebody like me to tell just what they're all about. Like before I even read all this, the first thing I'm going to do as a podcast host is I'm going to look at their guest tags and just say, okay, uh, yeah, a couple of those line up. I'm going to keep on reading, right? I'll keep on going through. And then they've got their images. This is their pod match profile. It's got everything that a host would need. Like me as a host, I don't have to ask them for anything, including images. I'll tell you what, before pod match, yes, I'm the creator of it. But one of the biggest pain points I had was having a guest on my show and then chasing them for weeks to get a single image of them. I'm like, dear God, please give me a picture of you to use. And they'll send me like a terrible selfie in a dark room. I'm like, please, not that one. Do you have anything else? Now I can actually see images. And you'll notice they have a good variety. Like there's one that when we had Michael and Tanya on my show, my person who handles social media loved this picture because it already pulled the background out. So she was able to put that in all kinds of sweet graphics and stuff. And she's like, can you get more guests like Tanya and Michael? I was like, sure. But anyway, that's like, and we've had hundreds of guests on the show. So that was like a really cool thing to hear. But having a good variety of pictures is very important. The next thing is just the bio section. This is typically what a podcast host is going to read. Again, most people's will be shorter because it's one person. This is both of them. So it's a little bit different. But even if you just had one section like this, make sure it's what you want the host to read. Because I've the first time I wrote my own bio, I wrote it in a way that... The first host who read it, I'm like listening to him. I'm like, this is awful. Like, who wants to hear this, right? Like, and thankfully, Tanya and Michael can help with this. So make sure that, again, you talk to them about it, um, about how to like set one up properly. But it's really important that you have something there that a host can read. Because again, if I'm the host, I now don't have to ask you for that. I just have it ready to go. And you know what's going to be consistent with what you want. I didn't just make it up because I didn't feel like asking you, right? It's there. And then a desired call to action link. This is a really important thing. Where do you want that podcast host to send their listeners? And what's a little bit more about it? Like, can you explain it to that podcast host? Having this clearly identified up front, 
really helps the host a lot because how many of you listen to a podcast where the host is like, what's your website again? Or what's this again? Because they don't quite remember, but when you clearly give it to them, they can write it down and have it ready to go. So it's a really important thing because we should all have some form of call to action, right? There should be something that we're giving away or that we're going to help the listeners with. The next section here is actually the about section. This is where you can just really get into it. Like this is the stuff that's going to really help a podcast host understand what value you're really going to drive and bring. So super important there. And the next step here is the, uh, the learn more about them, just using social media and stuff like that. These are all their links. I'm not going to go to those right now, but you can go check those things out. They have a podcast so I can see that. So I, for me, I know if, if, if they have a podcast, they'll probably at least have a good setup with a mic, right? So they're not going to be uh, showing up in a dark room type of thing. Uh, and then I really like this section a lot, like having some ideas for titles. Me as a host, this helps me know like, okay, I really like this title. I might actually just use this for the podcast episode or I might tweak it a little bit, but I understand that that what I can kind of position as the main topic and they've already done a lot of the work for me because as a host, coming up with the titles can be kind of painful. So having somebody who's helped me with that is a great thing. And this section is probably like the most coveted section on Podmatch. You have to do really well with this. These are questions that they are ready to answer. Now, most hosts are not just going to read each of these down the, the list, but if they feel like they get stuck, almost every host, including myself, I'm, I'm, I like to think I'm fairly experienced at this point, I'm literally going to have questions that are like fallback questions of like, oh, shoot, they answered that really fast. I still got 15 minutes left. I want to record with them, right? Like I can jump in with one of these random questions. They've gone ahead and identified those for me. So that when I ask them, they're like, um, we don't really know about that, right? They're going to they're answer these questions really well because they say that they're ready for it. They're prepared for that. And then I love this section right here. You can actually have like your media, like what have you been on before? Like these are podcasts that they've been on previously. I can go watch or listen to these to just see an idea of like how they flow, how they work and stuff like that, which I think is really cool. And the last thing is some reviews, which uh, this is the public side of Podmatch. So like internally, there would actually even be a little bit more information and there'd be more reviews as well. But these are the public ones. And this was my podcast. So what's up? Um, you can kind of just see what some other hosts have said about them, which as far as I know, Podmatch is really one of the only places, if not the only place where you can actually see that type of thing. Anyway, so that is our profile. I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, that was a bit uh, of like a quick run through there. I think I'm off screen now, right? Cool. Yeah. 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 Your, your, your desktop is. Here's yeah. what I am going to add for everybody, though. Um, if you guys want to take a screenshot of that right there, that's everything just in list order that Alex just showed you on the page, but it'll probably just be easier for you guys to screenshot that. So I'll wait just a couple of minutes, screenshot it. That way you'll know everything you need to set up a Podmatch guest profile. I like that you call it a press kit. That's a better, like you're a little bit more experienced than I am, Tanya. Like that, that's what it's actually, that's what it is. It's, it's a press kit. Like you could literally send your public profile of Podmatch to anybody and it would have basically everything they need. And again, as a host myself, it is a dream to have somebody do that versus trying to track them down. And again, if they're not consistent, going to their social media and being like, is this even the right person, right? Like, um, right. anyway, but this is very helpful. Yeah, grab a screenshot of that for sure. Right. And, you know, I, I want to go a step further too for your advertising. I can't tell you how, how much stress it takes off of a business owner of any kind, an entrepreneur of any kind, to know that you have those kind of marketing tools at your fingertips in one folder, one place at any time. And you literally can create a campaign in 30 minutes and have it out there and be promoting your podcast. Um, there's literally just that fast. It's um, it's very important to build that out because you want that at your fingertips to, to take advantage of any opportunity. Yeah. And you want to provide them with quality materials too, guys. Uh, Alex, you have a question. Somebody asked in, on YouTube, is the speaker page a paid page? Um, need some clarification there. So I, I'm assuming she means setting up a guest profile. Does that cost anything is what she wants to oh, know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tanya. Appreciate it. Um, I yeah, think so. so. Yep. Yep. So there, there's multiple membership options, which you can, you can easily see. And uh, Tanya and Michael have a, a link out there that I believe probably adds a discount if I'm not mistaken. I think it, it does. Um, but do. I, I, I think it's about, I think it, if I'm not mistaken, like your discount will be $20, $20 per month, uh, unlimited matches, unlimited messages and stuff like that. There you go. Yeah. That'll help them out. So that'll be, that'll be good. And then there's a professional plan as well that you can look, it'll, it'll show you that option as well, but both plans work really well. Uh, can I in interject here and say it's stupid cheap for all the uh, stuff you get out of it, guys? It is. I mean, Not I'm just going to be bold it's about cheap. it. It's stupid cheap <laughs> for, for, for what you get out of that platform is incredible. 
it's, it's a massive incredible. amount. I mean, take Thank it you. from take it from people who were sending out letters, emails, uh, scouring the internet, looking for ways to reach people to be guests and have them to be guests. Like Podmatch has taken all of that out of uh, the game. So it is. I'm telling you, it's the only way to go. Yeah. Uh, we use the platform every day. We love it. I love these guys. These, 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 <laughs> they're cool. Stupid it's cheap. Hey, it's, it's, it's <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to get tomorrow morning, first thing is a uh, an email from Podmatch saying, we've raised our rates. Yeah. <laughs> you all are on the new beta test, and it's an increased rate, and that's the only change. I'm just kidding. We would never, <laughs> would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> so what you see in front of you guys, if you are, so we're the one-two punch, okay? If you're interested in learning how to position and present yourself as an irresistible podcast guest, hit that step one and go to, and, and if you want to scan it with your phone, just for those of you who are not familiar with how QR codes work, open up the camera on your phone, hold that camera right over the top of that QR code, real stable, like, and it should pop up a link and you tap that link and it'll take you right to where you can learn more. Or you can just go to howbrandfaceworks.com. Second step is Podmatch. Get on Podmatch, set up that profile, and you can even go in and start setting up the profile now and add to it as you go, you know, and publish it when you're ready. But don't go in there and start setting everything up with half of the things that, you know, with, with your stuff not thought out, right? Because what's going to happen is you're going to get frustrated. And a lot of times people will take a, you know, a look at you as a potential guest and they'll say, no, they don't have their stuff together yet. And they may not come back to you. First impressions are a lot, right? So get a few things together first and then dig in and go sign up for Podmatch and get in there and start looking around. Go ahead and get in there and start looking around now. You should do it. Listen, absolutely one, now. Remember one of the immutable laws of marketing. It is better to be first than it is to be best. So do not delay in getting started with both right. of these programs because it's important. Uh, as, as Alex can tell you, the momentum of podcasts are getting greater and greater and greater and greater and greater. And greater. Uh, but there's still a, a a huge ocean out there for all of us folks. So, but you want to get in there. You want to get down in there now because that competitive edge is going to get worse and worse and worse and trying to become guests on different podcasts as well as finding people that'll, that'll show up on yours. So. Right. If I can okay. jump in, can I jump in real quick? I just want to mention of something Absolutely. here. So, um, this is kind of, I don't know if it's off topic and started to steal the, th the thing here. My bad. But, um, when, when I first learned what you guys do and started, like went to how brandfaceworks.com, like I, I did this myself, like to go through it. I was really good on the podcast host side, like getting guests was really good, but me being a guest, I, I, I needed some work and I knew that I just didn't really know what to do. You all helped give me a, a proper path and plan. And now I get booked on, I get booked on way more podcasts. Like, and it caused me to change my pictures I was using. It caused me to change like the question that I was able to answer. Like it just aligned it better with who I am. Uh, and I've seen a lot more success. Like, so, I mean, a, a testament to what you guys do works is myself. Like I, that's why I love doing these webinars with you because I'm such a firm believer in what you all do. Cause I actually saw it work for me as an individual. Well, I'm glad to hear that really and truly. We, and we hear that. We hear that from so many people and I am the same way, Alex. I, I'm living proof. And I mean, it all started right here. I, I always was a marketer. I've always been a marketer. I've been a marketer since I was about 14 years old, but I and was never truly, uh, but until I learned branding, I could never like tie in an ROI to my marketing. Now I can track literally everywhere that I spend a dollar and how many dollars I get back because of that. And so building a brand is very important. It's going to take a lot of confusion out of your life by doing so uh, and give you some direction. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that, Alex. Thank you so much. Hey guys, just a reminder, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube page, youtube.com slash brand face star is where we are right now. Subscribe to the page because when you do that, you'll art automatically, let's see if I can say that again. You are automatically entered to win. <laughs> One of three personal brand building programs that we're giving away today. We wrote the program called brand builder. And uh, you can go through step-by-step -step video training program, teaching you exactly how to brand yourself. And, uh, and that is what we're giving away today. Three of those courses, two, three people that subscribe to the YouTube channel today. Okay. 
So, um, so let's see, we've got another question here. This is a, actually, uh, Brad, I want to address your, okay. um, your question directly because it's actually a really, really good one there. Uh, being an author and a podcaster, uh, obviously they overlap, like you said, but yet different. Would you see this as two plans or separate? And the answer to that is no. And that's, that, that's because personal branding really takes in the full gamut of what right. we do. And that was one of the things when I started working with Tanya eight years ago that really blew my mind. I had three divisions in my company. I, I had an auction company. I had a real estate company. I had a construction company, right? I had an uh, investment company that was in, um, in, in we were, we were building because we we're trying to get out of construction. And, but she was able to tie all of that under one brand because it all, had to do with my makeup and I was the face of the business. So it's, it, we do the same thing for you. Like it would be one brand uh, that would be Brad Shreve, but it would be all the things that make you who you are. And that includes the author yeah. and the podcasting because they complement each other. Like you said, they mm -hmm. overlap. So you definitely, yeah. if you guys have more than one genre you're in, it doesn't matter because it's personal branding and that is just a part of your makeup. And that's what you're trying to show your crowd what your makeup is because people are going to follow a podcast. That's why people have a podcast. And Alex, you, you would, uh, if you disagree with this, please speak up about it. But that's why you have so many people that will be in the same genre, but some of them have more listeners than others, you know, because people follow a person, like they're really interested in what that person looks like, talks like, and their interest is in that, even if sometimes the uh, subject matter is the same. Yeah. And I'll give you a, a, an example. We're working with a podcaster right now who came into the program and he ha he already had a podcast, right? But he didn't like the name of his podcast. He didn't feel like it aligned with what he did. He's also a, um, a financial advisor and he also has one other business. He does some real estate investing. Mm -hmm. And so he came to me and he said, I feel like three different people. Right. And I said, no, you know, that's what happens when it gets all confused and, and discombobulated. You've got to look at it the opposite way. You're one person, but your story tells why you're involved in these three things, mm -hmm. right? Not three different stories and three different people, but one story explaining why you're involved in these three things, because there's a direct connection between all, all of them generally. Uh, I mean, almost always. And if there's not, then we have some things to work out, but that's okay. We usually do that. You know, sometimes that does happen where you're off on a tangent over here somewhere and it really doesn't align with anything else you want to do in your life. And then we can help you, you know, decide those things too. But for the most part, they're all aligned and it's just a matter of building the brand around it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I hope we answered your question, Brad. And if there are any more questions, okay. So we want to check, uh, I don't know if we have the listeners yet or the uh, subscribers yet. If we don't, I'll announce them right after this. So I'm checking my comments or my private chat. While you're working, looking at that, I'm just going to mention that when I was going through this, I um, I personally felt like I was removing friction points because, like you said, like my story, like I, I've done, I've done a lot, like like anybody has really with their life. Like I'm not saying I've done more than anybody else, but like. I did aerospace for 15 years. I did blogging for a while. I did speaking. I did a little bit of coaching, right? I got into podcasting. And like at first, I just felt like I had so much friction. Like I couldn't talk about all those things because they they didn't they felt disconnected. So what you're talking about is like you teach people how to like basically build the story into them because the story is already there. It's just a matter of drawing it out of yourself. And now yes. like I feel like I'm a frictionless individual. And like I think that's probably why I get booked more is because I can tell you how podcasting related to my aerospace time and vice versa, right? Like I can I can mm -hmm. share that stuff with confidence, but. Anyway, I, I just like resonate what you guys say, I know. So, but I think that it's, it's just important what, what, what we're talking about here. Like you've got to get this stuff right because it's going to be what sets you apart. Like as a host or a guest, it's going to be what helps elevate you to the top of your field that you're specifically in and going for. Gotcha. Yep. yep. Couldn't have said it better, Alex. That's awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back in. We've had quite a few people subscribe. Thank you very, very much. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll rather than do it right here and choosing names, we'll just actually put them into a hat, toss them around and pull three names out. And then we'll do it that way, which is a little bit more fair than just trying to like, you know, visually pick names. Smart. Because you there might you have a name we don't like. I mean, you just never know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that and we will announce it here in the same uh, comment thread on YouTube. So just just hang tight for that and uh, we'll be in touch with you to uh, if you're a winner and we'll get your information from you and get you actually logged in and started ASAP. OK. All right, guys. Hey, listen, thank you so much for taking your time and tuning in with us. 
um, you know, it's all about prosperity. And that's what we're talking about here today. But when we talk about prosperity, we're not just talking about money. We're talking about the full 360 of the abundant life that we truly wish for each and every one of you guys. Uh, we know at Brand Face that prosperity favors the bold. So we say be, be bold, bold, folks, especially with your <laughs> brand, especially on your podcasts, especially in 2022. It's going to be a fantastic year. Thank you, Mr. Alex. Always. You're always a pleasure. And thank you, Miss Tanya. Yep. Thank you so much, Alex. All right, guys, we'll see you here next time. And let us, you know where to find us. Hit us up here on YouTube and we'll answer every question you got, guys. And don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.